right away. Welcome everyone to the Dream Alliance weekly call. Tonight we are covering um, the five day sneak peek process because that is what was requested. So we kind of changed the agenda around and I have gotten that on the agenda for us tonight. So we're going to be covering how to set up a sneak peek, what really needs to go into preparing for a sneak peek, some different ideas from other leaders that how they, how I've incorporated different things from other leaders and how they've done sneak peeks. And that's what we're going to be covering. And we're going to, we're going to dive straight in. It's nine o'clock and we're going to get started right away. Um, I like to start on time, so please be here at 9 o'clock so we can get started promptly and not be staying over since this is all kind of super late for most of us on the East Coast. One of the things I did want to mention, though, um, before we dive into the sneak peek information, is I wanted to let you guys know that yesterday I met with our leadership pods, and it went very well. Right now I'm working one-on-one -on -one with 20... I think it's about 22 people from the team that I hand selected and we're going through uh, what, what I'm calling leadership pods. So I've divided them up into groups of five and I'm working individually with each one of them um, in these pods and if, in groups of five. So it's been a lot of fun and we're going into things that you don't typically get covered on these calls and it's more of like a one-on-one. -on -one. Although they're in pods of five, it really is very intimate. So if that's something that you're interested in the future and getting involved with, just let me know and I'll take that into consideration. Okay, so let's get started in the five-day sneak peek content. So in the calendar, we discussed that five-day sneak peek is really important Typically, we want to run the five-day sneak peek at least once a month and sometimes twice a month. So what you want to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull the calendar up for you guys while we're chatting so we can take a look at exactly where that falls. Let's see. I'm sure I have a Facebook up somewhere. And so what we're going to do is we're going to see exactly where that falls in the calendar. And I can give you an idea of timing because that's going to be super important when it comes to the sneak peek. So the first thing we're going to talk about is timing. When do you promote your event? When do you invite your coaches to participate in the event? So all of those things. And here is one more second. Here. Should hopefully see the calendar. Do you guys see the calendar? Thumbs up, awesome. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at the calendar here. So for our team calendar, we have the sneak peek laid out for it to start on the first Monday of the month, and then also the third Monday of the month, and even the, I guess that'd be the fifth Monday. So how we have it laid out in here is to start one every other, um, start one every other week. You definitely don't have to start one that frequently and you wanna get a kind of a feel for how often you wanna run them. I like to run them once a month myself personally because I feel like if I let them go that long, then I can get more people involved in the one that I do. And if you have more people in the group then there's more activity and it's more fun and it's kind of a little party. Instead of just having three or four people in the group, you have several. So I'll typically run them weekly. I'm sorry, once a month. So you want to start one. If you start it on the Monday, you want to start promoting for it the previous week on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So you can see right here for this one that's on the third week of the month, the previous week on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, you're promoting for it. And so what does that mean to be promoting for it? You want to be inviting your contacts you want to be talking to people that you've already met. You want to be putting posts out on Facebook or events out on Facebook or, or Twitter or Instagram or whichever social media platform you use. If you don't use social media for your business, you want to be talking to people at work. Hey, I know we don't usually you know, chat on Facebook, but I'm going to be doing this event there. Or you can even, we can even um, look at how we can do 
a sneak peek without using social media. I've never really gone into that realm of thinking, but I can definitely adapt this to a life like, for example, Ryan does a lot of things in his workplace. We could adapt this so that Ryan could use this in his workplace. It would change things up and it might be a little bit different or it might be, you know, an hour presentation instead of a week long presentation. But it, there could be a way for Ryan to adapt that to either within his um, community of friends there or maybe to an email marketing platform where instead of putting it on Facebook, you're running that out into an email marketing platform. So there's different ways to present the material, but what you want to do, regardless of where you are building your list for the event, you want to be doing it the previous week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. That statistically has worked best for other leaders in the business because it doesn't give people enough time to forget that they've committed to attending this event. And it also gives them just that enough time to really get their, you know, things together so that they can start the following Monday. So it's not enough time for them to kind of forget about it. And it's just enough time for them to get organized. So, so you want to do that the week before. Now, what I like to do is I like to invite my team to participate in these. And I haven't done that in a while because I've been testing different things so that I could really teach what works and what doesn't work. So I like to have my team participate. And what I will do in that case, if, for example, if I'm going to open up a sneak peek on that third Monday, I would tell the team on the first of the month that we're going to do a team-wide sneak peek. Now, why would I do it that far back? I want to give you, as coaches on the team, enough time to get yourself ready to promote the following week. So if I'm telling you on the first, and then we're all promoting on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and then we would launch the sneak peek on that following Monday. Okay, so timing is really important and really critical when you're doing these events because it otherwise can get very unorganized or you don't have enough time leading up to it or you don't have enough time for your coaches to kind of figure out how they need to promote for example, if I wanted to invite my team and I told you guys on this Monday, hey, we're going to do a sneak peek next week. I need you guys to promote Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. For me, in my personality type, that is not enough time for me to get organized and get promotional content together to promote an event the very next day. It just, and I may not even be working on that Tuesday, so then I miss out on promoting on that particular day. So you want to give, if you're going to open it up to your team or to the coaches on your team, or you're going to partner with another coach, you want to give that other coach enough time to really have the time to promote the event and have time to put their promotional material together. Now, what kind of promotional material am I referencing? That sounds really scary. It doesn't have to be scary. Um, we're just talking about you saying, Hey, I'm running this, Thing ever you've been wondering what this beach body thing is I'm doing I want to invite you to show it to you it doesn't have to be complicated it doesn't have to be uh, you know rocket science it doesn't you don't have to have a degree in marketing to figure it out you're just gonna say hey I've been doing this beach body thing and I want to allow you to participate and I want to kind of show you what it's all about so keep your promotions simple. I've noticed that the more complicated I make them, the actually the less people seem to be interested. So keep them simple. Just share from the heart as you would with anything else and people will be attracted to find out what's going on. Now in the coach online office, I just noticed today, as a matter of fact, under breaking news, they have a new link up for building your list. Um, it, it includes like the memory jogger and then there was two other tools and it's in the breaking news and it talks about keeping your list going. Your, the coach is as strong as their list or something along those lines. I highly advise you to go and take a look at that because it had three separate tools in there for building and maintaining your list, which I was super excited about seeing because 
our business, whether it be that we're talking about the sneak peek or whether we're talking about inviting to a challenge group or we're inviting for whatever event we're inviting to, our business is solely based on our list and the people that we know and the connections we have and the people that we can partner tools with that we know can make a life change for that person. So it's really important to always be maintaining a strong list. So make sure you go and check that content out. Now, we've talked a little bit about inviting. We've talked a little bit about timing. What I want to talk about next, and I'm going to take this off of screen sharing. What I want to talk about next is the idea of what you want to cover. So what you want to do is you want to sit down and you want to brainstorm, not what I talk about in my five day um, sneak peeks and, or not what another coach talks about, but you want to talk about what your clients have asked you about specifically. So think for a second, what kind of things have you consistently come across as being an objection to coaching, a, a question about coaching that you consistently hear, what do we do as coaches is consistently a question that's asked. What do we do as coaches? What is it that you do? And again, the biggest one is the, the heavy hitter objections. You want to hit those dead on. If you know that price is an objection, you want to hit, go straight at it. Don't, don't skirt around it. Don't, you know, try to avoid it. If you know right out of the gate that price or income or I'm trying to think of some others that are time, what are some consistent objections? Whatever those are, go at them straight on. Straight on. That's the best approach. That way you get it out of the way. It's gone. Because you know it's there. It's the elephant in the room. So deal with it right out of the gate, right? So what else? do you need to be covering? You want to definitely cover what is a coach. If I asked everybody on this call, what is a coach? You would each and every one of you give me a different answer. But you want to address that in these groups. What is a coach? And I'm going to show you a little bit more about the formatting of how you would do that or how I do it once we cover some of these um, bullet points here. So what is a coach? To me, coaches are fitness consultants, we are product consultants for Beachbody, we are cheerleaders, glorified cheerleaders. I love to use the term glorified cheerleaders. We are VIP customers. We are customers with a success story. What we are not, and I, I address this pointedly in that particular video, we are not uh, some of you are, but one of the things that I personally address is I'm not a fitness professional. I am not a medical professional. I am not a nutrition professional. I am not a dietitian. I am a cheerleader. I'm here to make sure that you are partnered with the right tools to have and develop a success story. I'm a people developer. I'm a people builder. What we're not is doctors. What we're not, except for a select hand few of you, I can see your beautiful faces, are nurses. What we're not is certified personal trainers, except for a few of us. You know, focus on what you are. And what you are is a great line of support. You are that one person in these people's lives that may be their only support system. I've had time and time again people tell me, you're the only person that supports me. You are that person. You are that light to these people. Focus on that piece of it. Um, so, and then the other thing is if you have other coaches participate in your group, you want them to be sharing their stories. You share your story, they share their story. That's going to inspire people because depending on the coach lineup that you have in the group, 
you're going to have very, very different stories. You know, if I took the gallery of faces that I can see right now, if each one of us told our stories, there would be some similarities, but there would be a lot of differences. You know, we, we have a lot of great stories amongst our team. Utilize that. Encourage the people that join you in these groups to utilize their story and to share that because somebody is going to connect with maybe not you, but with maybe somebody else in the group. And that's not to say, oh, well, if they connect with them, then they might sign with them or they might, you know, be followed them or whatever the case may be. Be confident and knowing that your teammate has your back. And they need to share their story because somebody needs that connection. And that's why we're there is to serve that person to make that connection. You know, that's why we work together as a team. You know, we need to be confident in trusting one another that, that we're not in there trying to do something icky that we're just there to, if Brenda's in my group and I need her to share her story because somebody can relate to Brenda I know that Brenda's got my best interest in heart, you know, that she's looking out for my best interest by, by opening up her story. So just invite other coaches that you trust to be a part of these groups. Um, I am going to show you really quick one of my sneak peeks, and then I'm going to open the call for questions. I'm getting a little bit better at this Zoom, but... I'm still not great at it, so I apologize. Okay, I think I just muted myself. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, so here's one of my sneak peeks, and one of the things that I do is I have my, um, I have just a simple, and I think I made this in, you can make a picture like that in PicMonkey or several other image creating. You guys have got tons of different ones. I might have made that in Photoshop just because at the time it's what I had opened. Uh, it, all it is is an image with a couple rectangles with some font on them. It's not rocket science. Um, you want to make it kind of a big deal that you're hosting this group. You are special. You are unique. Who are you? And you need to stand confident behind your name. Always, whether it be in this group or whatever you're doing, you need to stand confidently behind your name because there is something very unique and special about you and you need to always um, project that. And then what I have here is I welcome them to the group. And this is an old group that's shut down, but I welcome them to the group. And in that welcome, there is a video where I'm welcoming, welcome, welcoming them to the group in a video. And these are some of the topic matters that I covered in this particular group. And what I will do, if you would like, I can post this exact curriculum to the events page on Dream Alliance. So you can go through and watch the different videos. I have modeled my five day sneak peek a couple of years ago um, when we all kind of started doing them. I guess it's been about a year and a half or two years ago. I modeled mine with Tara Carr, kind of got some of her, some of the things that she was addressing and then there was some other things that I felt needed to be addressed kind of head on that were consistent objections that I was getting. And I, I addressed those things. Um, it, you know, it really doesn't matter what objections or things you're sharing, as long as you're sharing them passionately and with a lot of heart, because that's what people want to know is, can you transfer your belief of how much you love Beachbody and believe in Beachbody to somebody else? That's the bottom line. That's what it is at the end of the day. And whether you do that in this format or in various other formats, this is just one, one tool that you can use. So these are the, some of the things that I had done in this particular group. Um, 
Who makes a great team beach body coach? We covered that a little bit. Somebody that's passionate, caring, somebody that wants to invest in other people, somebody that, you know, wants to have the fulfillment of building other people. One of the things that I cover in that video is what we are not. I covered the fact that we're not sales, you know, we're not salespeople. We, I actually steer away from trying to bring in people that are the used car salesman type of personality because that's not who we are. That's not our culture. And so I address that in that video. And then I address in the next day's Beachbody a scam because, you know, we always talk about it's a pyramid scheme. It's a this, it's a that. I address that head on. How do we earn? I address that head on. Where, you know, where does our income come from? How do we make these incomes? Where, how is it broken down? I address that head on in day three. And what does it cost? We always hear about, well, what's this going to cost me? I address it. It's not. You know, and so when people are asked or when people are asking in the group, well, what's this going to cost? No problem. It's going to be addressed in a video on day four. And so it's addressed head on. Um, what kind of beach body coach are you? In that particular video, I address whether or not people are a hobby coach, a discount coach, or a business building coach. And so I kind of explain to them that this may be a fit for them, even if they don't want to build a business. You know, even if you don't want to have, you want to be the CEO of a multi-million dollar company, this still may be a fit for you because you can do this as a hobby. You could do this as a discount coach. So I address that in that particular video. And then what I also do is I thank them for attending on the final day, and which is also a video. Now, as people sign up to become coaches, I announce them in the group. And what that does, what I have found that that does is it creates momentum within the group. It just takes one person in a group of 50 people that are on the fence, it just takes one person to create a domino effect. And so you've got all these people, and not all 50 of them probably, but you've got all these people who are interested in coaching, but they're just not really, eh, they're like, eh. It just takes one person that first person to be the first person for the rest of them to kind of jump, jump in. So what I do is anytime anybody signs up, I create a graphic and I put it up on the page. I announce it there. I announce it on the team page and I announce it on my, my, my fitness page. And the reason why I do that is to create the momentum in the group for people to start signing up when they may not have the courage to do, do it right away or they don't want to be the first person in the group or so on and so forth. Now, I also used to do promotions within the group. Like if, you, if you're the first person to sign up, then I'll, you know, you'll get a special gift from me. Or if you're the first person to sign up, then whatever, fill in the blank. We just had our um, P&P updated, and Jonathan brought it back to our attention as leaders tonight that you, the only time that you cannot – do well I don't want to say the only time one of the times that you cannot do a promotional giveaway in response to an action is for recruiting so if if somebody is signing up to be a coach then you can't gift that or give them something in return and it's one of the very very black and white areas is in recruiting so I'm going to post that uh, on the team page as well for you guys tonight so you guys can read through that dialogue. And he's doing those highlights of P&P for the next five days, and I'll post them for each day. And then he also said that at the end of the five days, he would do a document with all of them. So once he has that, I'll make sure to get that on the team page for us as well. But that is pretty much how I run my five-day sneak peeks. Now, I've also heard of people doing them as an event on Facebook. You have an hour where you set an hour, a day and an hour, and you have them attend for that hour. And all of this curriculum is basically put out within that hour, every, something every 10 minutes or, or something along those lines. And 
I've seen people have success with that as well. I've never taken that approach, but I mentioned that to say, think outside of the box. This isn't the only way to do this. You could do it through email marketing, as I said earlier, where you send, you have people sign up for a specific subs subscription on your email marketing, and you send these out as a drip email every day or you know every other day. Uh, so there's different ways to do it that way as well, where you're sending them out in email marketing. You don't have to use social media. You can use other tools to make that happen. So that's kind of where I'm at with the five day sneak peek and some additional ideas there. I am going to unmute everybody, which is kind of scary. Um, and do you guys have screaming babies in the background? If you can just mute yourself. <laughs> okay. Um, and let me guys ask any questions you might have about this process and what, what I may not have hit on that's important for you to, to understand. I had a question, a quick question there regarding the, um, I guess, the sneak peek and the rules and regulations. Uh, the question was, I know how you're seeing a prize for the first person to sign up, so how can we reward that where it's not against uh, the policy? You can't reward it. You can't do There's it? There's no okay. way around it. Hang on just a second and I will... Um, there you are. Hold on just a second. I will show you guys that... I've got you unmuted, Bren, and... Okay. I'm going to show you guys that real quick so we can go over it together. All right. It cannot be reworded and it cannot be worked around. Um, okay. Let me find the verbiage here. Okay, it's right here. To offer a permissible non-cash incentive reward, it must be based upon something specific and finite, such as achieving a certain rank as of a specific date. And it must apply equally to all those that are at that reward level. For example, all my coaches who achieved the rank of one star as of September 30th, 2015, will receive a copy of a personal development book of their choice. Again, though, you may never offer non-cash incentive rewards as a recruitment hook, such as sign up with me, and if you become one of my diamond coaches, you can join me on an all-inclusive paid trip to Hawaii. Okay. He's using that as a glorified example. Um, he covered cash up above here as well. Um, they may never be offered as a reward for, okay, so to Similarly, for any permissible non-cash incentive you may offer to your download coaches, they may never be offered as a reward for any recruitment activity. All of my personally sponsored coaches who recruit at least two new coaches, uh, so you can't even transversely offer a recruitment bonus. So like if I said, so this is something that is really important to have a good handle on it. I can't recruit based on an incentive and I can't offer you an incentive to recruit. So it can't be transitive. It can't be direct or indirect. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I'm going to post that. I'll post that out on the team page for you guys. So we can't be like, if you buy a challenge pack, I'll give you crack. Well, we can, as long as they don't sign up as a coach. Um, wow, we're opening up a can of worms here. Um, no, it's okay. It's okay. As far as I know, you can offer an incentive up to $50 because it wasn't addressed in that particular question was not addressed in this post. But as far as I know, you can offer an incentive up to $50, but it has to be offered to everyone. So if you if you offer an incentive for signing up with a challenge pack and you put it out to the general public, you can't say, 
for people age 22 to 25 who are black men. It has to be, I'm just giving you like a crazy example of you. It has to be to everyone who signs up for any challenge pack. So it can't even be like if you said for anybody that signs up for a turbo fire challenge pack, I will give you crack from my special crack dealer. <laughs> I, it can't be, yeah, it can't be like that. It has to be everybody has to qualify for it. And so, so if I said, if you buy a challenge pack in the month of July, I will give you fixate, then I'm kosher. Yes. Um, okay. That is the way. Say, like the first four people who order challenge packs this month get a fixate cookbook. Exactly. Well, and I mean, I, I do that. Um, I will pull that PMP up as well to, to look at it again. Um, a bit, but what I do is I typically will do, okay, so to reword, like Brenda talked about rewording things. Now what you could do with that, you can't reword the recruiting thing. That is just black and white and it could get us in a lot of trouble. But the, what you just said, Mandy, could be reworded to while supplies last. So you may only have four, but that doesn't need to be broadcasted that it's to the, it could be, you know, limited quantities or I only have a couple or I wouldn't even use that. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't say, well, to the first four people that, because you're going to help me hit success club and that's all I really care about. <laughs> you know, you, you know what I'm saying? Like you have to make it more generalized and when you generalize it down and you kind of, muddy the waters a little bit and not be so pointed and so direct about it, then I think you're safe. But I will post that PNP as well. Um, Cause I want you guys to fully understand incentives and all of those things. I, I do have some good news though. I thought that when they rewrote this PNP, it was going to affect our diamond retreat. And he actually says in here, um, Something, and he mentioned the diamond retreats and he said, as long as we do training, um, that we would be fine. So it's, I mean, that part's good because they were, there was talks of making leaders stop doing the diamond retreats because everybody was doing them and it was, there was concern that it was going to cause problems. Okay. Unmuting everybody again to see who else has questions. I have a question. Okay. Kristen. So let me ask you a question in regards to that policy that you just stated, um, where coaches cannot offer uh, a cash prize in regards to meeting a team beach body goal. Now, what about that uh, dash to diamond or it starts with diamond group where at the end it's a pot? Okay, hang on. No, I'm working. Hang on, I'm trying to unmute you. You unmuted? Okay. Um, what, and I'm gonna ask you, anybody that wants to chime in, just unmute your, your computer. You can unmute from your line too. Um, so, Lindsay and I were discussing that tonight, the Dash Diamond. We are going to discuss it with Jeffrey. He is on the cab, so he would know a little bit more directly. What my thinking is, is because that money is not coming from a leader, we're under the radar. That money is actually pooled from the coaches. So I, my thoughts are that it's safe and it doesn't even fall under that policy because you guys are like paying each other. Um, but we are going to be investigating it a little bit just to make absolutely positive that we're good to go okay i i'm gonna um let me stop this recording i'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording so here we go